Hey guys, today I'm going to be giving you my review and first opinions and thoughts on The Batman. It's not a movie I've been terribly excited to see, which is odd, but stay tuned and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Hey guys, welcome back to The Well-Rounded Dude. My name is Chris. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, we cover a whole bunch of topics trying to elevate you to that well-rounded status. This is usually the part where I tell you that today is no different, but that is not the case because I am in my car. I just got done seeing The Batman for the first time. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes since the movie let out, and I'm going to give you a spoiler-filled review, so enjoy. Okay, so here are my thoughts on the movie. It's better than I thought it was going to be, I'll be honest. Uh, from the get-go, I had misgivings about Robert Pattinson becoming the Batman. I think there was better casting choices that they could have done, namely Alan Richardson. He's already played two or three different superheroes before, but I digress. Uh, the movie was not bad at all. Now, this is coming from a lifelong Batman fan. I have read consumed Batman content since I was four or five years old so I, I know the character pretty much and what I will say that is my favorite part of the movie there's a couple good parts in it but my one of my favorite parts of the movie is the music I do love the theme that they made for the Batman it is haunting it is awesome another thing that I really really enjoyed is this is Probably the first Batman movie where Gotham is its own character. Uh, Christopher Nolan tried to do it before in the Dark Knight trilogy, and he did succeed to some point, but this movie really made Gotham feel like a character through some of the lesser characters in this. One of the other things that I really liked was the relationship between Batman and Gordon. I thought that that really worked in this movie. Um, if you don't know, uh, Bruce has been Batman for about two years, and him and Gordon are pretty tight. Gordon already has a signal. They kind of mentioned that in the beginning, like set it up that you know, I've been at this for two years, and we have a signal, and you know, that's really the best part where you can see Gotham as its own character. You can see the people's reactions when they see the the bat signal in the sky they it brings out a a, a fear in them and i thought that worked <laughs> we're doing it on the fly tonight guys so there's going to be a lot of screw-ups but <laughs> anyway um that's where you see a lot of the character of gotham it really brings out that fear and that re worked really well for me in this movie one thing that did not work really well for me um was the relationship between bruce and alfred um you know, typically there's that father relationship, you know, between Bruce and Alfred that you can, you can see, you know, Alfred looks at Bruce as a son and that he takes care of him. And that's a really integral part to the story. The problem with that is we don't get very much of Alfred in this movie. We get like maybe two or three scenes at most. And I think that's a detriment to this movie. That hurts it because... Bruce and Alfred is such a strong relationship that you kind of have to really focus on. I mean, Nolan did it great with Michael Caine and Christian Bale. And to say that, you know, that they built up uh, Andy Siracus, that he was going to play Alfred. I thought he was going to have more to do in this or at least have a little bit more. And he just didn't. But the scenes that he is in, um, they do try to show that, that bond. But we see so little of Alfred that it kind of doesn't work as well as it should have so let's talk about Robert Pattinson and if you guys know me you know I've had some issues with Robert Pattinson I mentioned it before being cast um, I'm not a fan of his work I don't think he's really that good of an actor he seems to be a one-note actor in my opinion um, he did better in this role than I thought he was going to but he's still not my favorite Batman, <laughs> I will say. I'll give him a little bit more credit than than I thought originally. But that being said, he is not my favorite Batman. Um, he doesn't really emote that well. You know, he's kind of one note. Like he, if you saw Twilight, 
you've seen his Batman. That's pretty much it. He will look off into the distance when he's talking to people. He doesn't look at them. And when he does, it's, you know, it's like he's about to pout or cry. Um, it's certain parts of the story, you know, they do bring up some painful child past, like, you know, his parents' murders and him finding out that his father, you know, probably had a guy killed. <laughs> um, and spoilers if you aren't aware but I'm, I'm gonna dwell into all the spoilers so shame on you if you're watching this before having to go see the movie but um yeah and he you know he just to me he's one note when he's in the costume it's still one note his eyes give him away every time it just yeah he the whole point of batman is he's supposed to be you know very stone-faced very you're not supposed to be able to read him and you can read Robert Pattinson like a book. Um, <laughs> yeah, at one point they make you think that the, the Riddler knows who Batman is and he very may well be. That's something that's not cleared up in this movie. But, um, you know, and just while Riddler is like tell, telling him that, you know, he possibly knows and this is Batman and his man's like, Every time he says Bruce Wayne, he's like, Bruce Wayne. He's, he's giving it away. I'm sorry. He's giving it away. Um, you know, he's got the gravitas, though, I, I would say. Um, they like to play a lot of him walking into a scene and playing the theme. The theme is awesome. But they like to play the theme and have Batman slowly walk in, you know, and then there's Pattinson as, as he's walking in. And I mean, he's he's got the walk down, like, of all of what Batman is supposed to be and a lot of it just doesn't feel earned yet you know especially if this is supposed to be two years into his career and people don't trust him I mean it, it it's kind of weird but it kind of works if, because we all know who Batman is so that's how that goes like it's a little weird but it kind of works in that instance and the dude's tiny um, there's a scene where Pattinson takes a shirt off to like try to figure out some clues because you know that's what you always do when you're investigating a murder is take off your shirt and he spray paints on his floor some some stuff to try to figure out you know what the Riddler is trying to do and I mean he's he's tiny like those rumors are true like he, he working out did not work for him like he, he looks tiny he's not as big as you would think Batman could be. You know, I know a lot of people complained about Christian Bale, but Christian Bale looked buff, extremely buff compared to Robert Pattinson. So let's talk about the Riddler. The Riddler is portrayed by Paul Dano. I don't know him. I've never heard of him before, never seen his work. Um, this is the first thing I've ever seen him in. Um, it's a very different and unique take on the Riddler. They really have the Riddler as a very uh, serial killer, conspiracy theory nut and you know it's unique for the character you know Riddler hasn't been one of my favorite Batman characters to be honest it, you know his in in the comics and the cartoons traditionally he's very arrogant very um, one note they I mean even in the in some of the canon they refer to Riddler as a C-lister and this is really a different take of him being like really 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 insane and they added this whole political element into it of stuff that we're going through now about conspiracy theories and uh, militias and, and groups that are, fringe groups that are trying to overthrow the government or expose some kind of secrets. And that's what this movie was basically about. That's that's the whole premise of it. The Riddler's plan is to expose the corrupt Gotham through different factions of like Falcone, the GCPD, the mayor. They uh, go after Bruce Wayne because his father, like I mentioned earlier, might have killed somebody. Which will lead us into the actual story of the movie. The story, like I said, is Riddler is trying to go after the corrupt and through it Bruce learns about himself, learns that his father may have had a man killed, that he was working with Falcone, which I do believe that they do mention a story of Falcone getting shot and Bruce's dad helping him and, and operating on the in the kitchen table at Wayne Manor. I, I'm pretty sure that was a story in um, 
from one of the video games that they they talked about and uh they that was a story also too in uh the long halloween movies that uh jensen ackles voiced they that was a an important scene so they're really playing off that i gotta you know as much of a batman expert as i am i'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank on if that was actual canon and through this bruce learns that he may not want to be vengeance <laughs> uh that's the beginning of the movie is him beating up some some thugs they ask him who he is he says he's vengeance he's called vengeance throughout the movie and then at the end when he captures riddler's goon and they take off the mask and they ask the goon who are you and he goes i'm vengeance it makes bruce realize he doesn't want to be vengeance he wants to be a symbol of hope and that's where we leave with this movie is that he wants to be a symbol of hope. He has a chance to go off with Catwoman. He decides not to. And that he's going to continue down this path of fighting Gotham. Trying to save Gotham. We also get set up for the Penguin series. It's going to be coming out on HBO Max. I didn't talk about Colin Farrell as, as the Penguin. Uh, I thought he did okay. You know, they, they really did a great job with the prosthetics. You know, it kind of makes me interested to see, like, more of penguin's backstory and uh it it was pretty interesting i mean to see a little bit that he's in it too i mean he's in a few scenes but not many I, I would love to hear his backstory but um he while he looked like facially like the part like conference he's a little bit taller than what the penguin should be you know he wasn't you know the penguin is supposed to be short and stocky you know he he looked more like Colin Farrell than he did Danny DeVito, which I guess is a good thing, but um, that was pretty interesting. I, I am looking forward to the HBO Max show. We should also talk about Catwoman, uh, Zoe Kravitz. Uh, I would say that she had the best costume in the movie, aside from that terrible, terrible mask. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like they ran out of budget when they got to the mask, that they just decided, uh, okay, Somebody go get a knit beanie and cut a hole out in it so she can wear that. But from the neck down, the costume was perfect. I, I don't know what happened, but maybe it's a thing where they, they want the actors to have their faces exposed as much as possible. But it, she did a very good job. Uh, she's probably the standout for me in this movie. It was Zoe Kravitz. Back to costumes. I really don't care for the Pattinson costume. I think it looks a little weird. Um, I find it very interesting. There are some cool things about it. Um, there's a scene where he, Batman's trying to get away from some police and he is able to turn the costume into like a flying squirrel kind of suit like those para, uh, I don't know what they're called, but the skydivers that, you know, they're wearing those, I'll post a picture in here so you guys know what the hell I'm talking about. But he turns it into one of those and he jumps off the building and kind of glides. Yep, that was cool. And uh, he gets injured later on in the movie and he has a spot in his suit that he can inject himself with epinephrine. I think that's very interesting. Also to the bat logo on his chest, uh, it's an actual knife. It can cut things. He uses it a few times in the movie, which is cool because Batman's costume traditionally in the comics always was very functional. You know, like the ears could break off and be flashlights um, in the comics. This is strictly the comics. Um, in the cape, he would have uh, weights sewn at the bottom so he could like hit people in the face with his cape. So the fact that they made his costume functional and ready to receive epinephrine i thought was a very very cool uh, addition to it so spoiler alert at the very end we get a familiar voice cackle face and i'm assuming and i'm sure it's a correct assumption the joker does make an appearance but you only kind of see like you know this part of his face as he talks to a defeated riddler and kind of sets up a sequel, which would be cool. I mean, there, there's not much to go on with the little bit that he said and the laugh, but I'm very pleased that they introduced the Joker. So all in all, should you guys go see this movie? I think you should. Uh, it was definitely a, a good movie. 
it's not the best. I would, I would say there are better Batman movies out there. Um, but it'll definitely keep you entertained. Um, I definitely think there was a lot they could have cut out for that three hours that I just sat in there to watch this. But um, it was definitely entertaining. So uh, if I would have to rate it, I would give it like a seven and a half out of ten. I think it's it's worth your time. You know, if they, I'm sure they're going to do a sequel. I'll be there for that. Um, you know, there, again, there's just a few things I wish they would have done differently. But all in all, not as bad as I thought. Uh, I didn't absolutely love this movie, but I didn't absolutely hate it either. So go see it for yourself. Down in the comments, let me know what you think. I would love to hear it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's video. Um, all in all, like I said, I did enjoy the movie. Uh, but, you know, it was a couple things were uh, exactly the same of the Nolan movie. So this is kind of like a, a requel, as they <laughs> would say, in a lot of ways. But, um, but that's going to do it for this week's video. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you thought. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share. Do all the social media things. Help me fight the YouTube algorithm. Ring the bell. Check out thewellrounderdude.com. Dude 15 gets you 15% off your total purchase. And uh, yeah, guys, I will see you next time. Hopefully you enjoy this. If you guys want to see me do more movie reviews, let me know down in the comments. Peace.